Roy Rogers Restaurant swaggered into the fast food industry cowboy style and is currently limping out of it. The chain reached for the skies and hadn't blasted off before it started having issues. However, against all odds, the chain is eyeing a resurgence, but this isn't the first time it has had grand ambitions. This is the story of Roy Rogers Restaurants, the chain that refused to die. Roy Rogers Restaurants began with a bang, and by bang we mean a lawsuit. Okay, wait, we are a bit along the way. Let us rewind it right to the very beginning. Let us start with Big Boy, a fast food chain which Robert C. Bob Wyan began in 1936 and was heavily into franchising. As a result, different franchise owners owned Big Boy restaurants, including Azar, which brothers Alex, David, and George Azar founded. Azar's Big Boy restaurant franchise founded Robbie's House of Beef restaurants, but lost in 1967 when the Marriott Corp. bought Bob's Big Boy and put Bob Wyan on its board. Marriott also bought the Big Boy trademark, which gave it access to the entire Big Boy restaurant's ecosystem. Yes, the same Marriott. At that time, the company was very much into the restaurant business and owned a chain of them. Marriott controlled Hot Shops, which was formerly an A&W root beer stand in 1927. It also had a Hot Shops Junior, which it created to compete with McDonald's as a quick service restaurant. Marriott also bought Robbie's Roast Beef, which was a creation of a Czar's Big Boy restaurant in 1968. Robbie's had 13 restaurants in six states, and upon purchase, Marriott was looking to expand the business all over the country. The parent company hatched a plan to convert the big boy franchise owners to become Robbie's franchise owners. However, there was a problem. Arby's sued. Arby's sued Robbie's, claiming that the company stole its trademark and was competing with it unfairly. Arby's even claimed that the name Robbie's was similar to its own name and could confuse customers. To solve the issue, Marriott decided to change its name, and Bob Wyan, the founder of Big Boy, had an idea. Remember, Bob now sat on the board, and he recommended that the business should use the name of a popular actor and singer for the restaurant. So that was where Roy Rogers came in. Bob knew Roy Rogers' agent and wanted to meet Rogers, but there was a problem. Other businesses also wanted Rogers' name for their companies. So who is this Rogers anyway, and why did everyone want him? Roy Rogers, born Leonard Franklin Sly, was a charismatic singer and actor who was popular for his cowboy characters. Due to this, he was a name brands wanted to be associated with, and he also wanted to be associated with brands, too. When Robbie's came, and despite having other offers, he chose them, and subsequently, the restaurant changed its name to Roy Rogers Roast Beef Sandwich Restaurants. That was about the only thing the restaurant changed. It kept the other things Arby's was complaining about. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Many big boy franchise owners decided to become Roy Rogers franchisees. And others? Well, they didn't like the idea that they had to part with some of their money to pay Rogers for using his name. Marriott opened the first Rogers on Bailey's Crossroads, Falls Church, Virginia in April 1968. The property on which it founded the first Roy Rogers restaurants belonged to Henry L. Wrights, Hot Shops manager and co-founder. Marriott then converted another Hot Shops location at 5214 River Road in Bethesda, Maryland to Roy Rogers. By May, Robbie's locations also began to convert into Roy Rogers locations, with the man himself traveling and doing commercials. At first, Roy visited four states, spending an hour in each location as he met customers. The actor and singer usually shook hands and took photos with the customers he met. The ads he featured in were relaxed. In those ads, Roy would check up on the kitchen staff to ensure that they stuck with the quality that the restaurant promised. Naming the restaurant after Roy began to pay off as an excellent choice because apart from the man's appeal, he was also a brilliant salesman. Soon, the restaurant began to expand shortly after its creation. By the end of 1968, the restaurant already had 56 units and was already constructing 39 more. With this impressive growth, Marriott became confident that it would have 700 units in four years. Famous last words, anyone? By mid-1969, the company already had 105 locations, and the parent firm was even more optimistic and believed the company would have around 870 units in four years. 
At first, everything seemed pointed toward the projection. However, in 1970, with the restaurants having over 160 locations, growth stopped. Business was tough in 1970, with different locations already suffering from financial problems. So the company closed these locations, which affected revenue. Eventually, it returned to franchising, but its projection of over 700 joints had become a pipe dream. However, that didn't matter. The company continued to be focused on expanding, and Marriott's purchase of Gino's restaurant in 1982, Roy had 180 more locations. It also entered the Baltimore, Washington area. After several decades of operating in the fast food market, Marriott began to face its own troubles. The restaurant couldn't focus on its restaurant business as it had no money to do so. To raise the money it badly needed, the company sold its entire restaurant business. Amasco, the then parent company of Hardee's, saw an opportunity. The company Hardee's operated in the Midwest and the Southeastern America, so it was looking for a way to break into other markets. And with Roy being in Northeastern America and the Mid-Atlantic, it was the perfect buy. So, in 1990, Imasco bought Roy Rogers for Marriott in a deal worth $365 million. At the time of purchase, Hardy's had 66 stores and Roy had 153. Despite Roy being the restaurant with more joints, Imasco decided to convert Roy's stores into Hardy's. The company started small. It changed the items on Roy Rogers' menu to that of Hardy's. The familiar burger taste that people had come to associate with Roy went to the disappointment of customers. However, they still stuck by the restaurant until they decided they couldn't take it anymore. Imasco was changing things too much and too fast, and the customers loyal to the chain revolted against the new owner. So the parent company had to put on hold all its plans and converting the Roy's to Hardy's. Eventually, Imasco had to let go of its purchase. Its plan of using it to expand its interest into new markets failed as customers resisted it. So the company sold the Roy Rogers joint it controlled to McDonald's, Wendy's, and Boston Market. The sales took place between 1994 and 1996, and it severely reduced the numbers of the chain. Eventually, Imasco sold the restaurant to CKE in 1997, but it still owned the trademark and franchise system. Despite CKE's purchase, the company couldn't reach its former height. Imasco wanted to sell all the interest it had in the company, but there was a problem. Who would buy the chain considering how previous buyers had failed to make it work? This was where the Plamondons came in. Pete Plamondon Sr. served Marriott as its VP when the hotelier began Roy Rogers' restaurant. At that time, Plamondon was impressed by the chain's growth and he became a franchise owner, owning 15 locations. Through the chain's chaotic period of multiple sales, Pete held on to his locations. In the early 90s, his sons, Jim and Pete Plamondon Jr., joined him in running the locations he controlled. By the end of the 90s, his sons bought him out of the business, and the action they took next showed they paid attention to their dad. The boys bought an old Burger King location in Maryland and converted it into a Roy Rogers restaurant. That location was a hit. The lines were out both doors and were 30 people deep. You would have thought we were giving the food away, one of the brothers said. After the positive performance of that location, the brothers decided they needed to buy the brand from Hardee's, and they did in 2002. Apart from the success that the brothers recorded in their own location, the fortunes of the restaurant had mostly dwindled. They had their work cut out for them. Unlike Imasco, who tried to change things, the new owners returned to the business's roots. They promoted the Fixin's Bar, which was a bar where customers could customize their burgers. The bar, which began as a salad bar in the 60s, evolved to become a customer favorite as it gave the customers the feeling of being in control. The Plamondons liked the effect the bar had on their customers. They can pile on as many tomatoes or as many slices of onions or what have you as they want. That's okay. That's the value that we provide, Jim Plamondon said. The bar wasn't the only thing that gained prominence. The chain's original menu did too. When the chain first began operations in the late 60s, it wanted to stand out from the competition. So rather than focus on just burgers alone like most fast food joints did, the chain also included roast beef sandwiches and fried chicken on its menu. To the company, the menu was like that so it could give customers the options that they rarely get someplace else. Looks like the chain cares about its customers a lot. Roy Rogers' restaurant began with the threats of lawsuits, and it grew to having close to 700 locations. However, it lost this opportunity to grow more due to business hiccups. 
which resulted in multiple sales before the chain eventually got to the current owner, the Plamondons. These new owners returned the chain to its roots, and the business continued to survive up to the point that it is now considering expansion. Should the business expand or should it consolidate what it has? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.